Hi, this is Karthik from Design School by WPAlgorithm.com. In this video, I'll explain Elementor 3.6 Flexbox container. Now, head over to your WordPress dashboard and first enable the Flexbox container. Click on Elementor. Click on Settings in your Elementor dashboard. Click on Experiments and scroll down until you see this Flexbox container. Now, by default, it will be under default. At the moment, I'm running the latest version of Elementor which is around 3.7. In the future versions, they may make it a default. But for now, you just need to click on Active and click on Save Changes. So that will enable Flexbox container. Again, go to Experiments and under Flexbox container, make sure this is turned to Active and click on Save Changes. And also clear any cache if you want to. Once you're done with that, now you can go to any page, post or a template right i have a template here i'll just click on edit with elementor and that opens up the elementor editing experience now the question is once we have enabled flexbox container i'll explain flexbox container in a bit but how do you actually use it or enable it we've activated it in the experiments tab now how do you use it let's say you already have pages or templates and you just want to convert them there's an easier way to do that. So this is a template constructed or designed using old elementary sections and columns. So if I click on it, you can see that this is actually a section. Even though I enabled my Flexbox container, this still is using the same old section. Well, how do you convert it? Well, you can click on any section and there is an option called convert to container. You can click on that and that will duplicate this section using the Flexbox container. So I'll just click on the section, I'll just click on convert and you'll get a pop-up saying your changes have been updated. Now if you scroll down, they're visually identical but this is a brand new section. How can you understand that? When you hover over it, there's a dark blue background. In your section, you can see around the editing handles, it's a light blue and brand new Flexbox container has dark blue or a bit darker shade of blue around its editing handles and the border and you can also find it out in the navigator so if you click on navigator right next to every flexbox container you'll see this dotted rectangle and that means this is a flexbox container and not your regular section right now if you already have a design built using the regular sections and columns you can duplicate it at a page level i don't think there's a way to do it per website level maybe in future they'll add it but this is the easiest way to duplicate all your old sections into the brand new flexbox container in your elementor template section or a page click on the settings cog at the bottom left corner and that will open up the page settings or the template settings so there is an option per page to convert this whole sections into the flexbox container i'll just click on that and that will duplicate every section visually and convert it to container. So you'll basically end up having an old copy and a brand new container, Flexbox container copy, right? Again, I'll just click on my navigator and you can see that here. You can see each section is duplicated into its Flexbox equivalent, right? But I don't want both of them on the same page. How can you delete that? So we just need to delete the old section versions Hold down the command or control key on your Mac or Windows machine and select all the old sections one by one. Basically they're going to be alternate sections since we've duplicated them. Just command click all of them, hold down command and keep clicking all of them. And once you have all the sections selected, right click on one of the selected sections and you'll find an option to delete all the items. So click on that and now you end up having just the containers on a page level. Now you can play with the brand new Flexbox container. You don't have to worry about section columns. They're all gone. Okay, now that we've understood how to convert our old sections into containers, now we need to understand what exactly is a container and how to work with it. Now when you click on a plus button, you'll see these options and they're not columns or section. These are basically containers. And the first one shows you the direction in which all the elements within this container will be shown, right? And what exactly is a container? Well, container, you can think of it as a box that will hold smaller boxes. Now, 
Each of the smaller boxes can be widgets or other containers. It's as simple as that. So when you click on the plus button, you'll be greeted with these different layouts for your containers. I'll pick the first one. And you'll understand the way in which the container works simply by dragging widgets into the container. The heading widget is stacked on top. That's great. Let's drag another widget into this container and you'll see that I can put this above this container or below this container. So just like that. And that means the flow of elements in this container is vertical. You can simply change the flow of the elements within this container. I'll just click and choose an image for a reference. So this is the container. I'll just click on the container and I'll just click on items. Under container settings, you can adjust the width of the container, which is the Flexbox container. You can also add a minimum height. You can specify how you want to enable overflow. If things are getting out of bound, you can simply hide them or you can do auto as well. And you can pick an HTML tag for this container. Now you can make the whole section clickable by picking a tag, which is really neat. And you can add any link to this container. Previously, it was not possible, but now you can simply select HTML tag, select A, which stands for link and just put in your link and this whole section will be clickable and that will take you to URL or you can also have dynamic options by clicking on this dynamic tags. Anyway, I'll just click on default. So this is the container. I'll just click on items. And as I said, items within container can be widgets or other containers within which you can have the same right so you can think of everything as a box right you can think of widget as a smaller box you can think of other containers as smaller boxes all of them basically we put them within a bigger box called a container right they're basically a collection of boxes so now we have the default direction which is from top to bottom now if you pick this row you can see the flow of elements is changed from vertical to horizontal that means elements are stacked from left to right instead of top to bottom now you can also reverse this right if you click on reversed column they'll be in the opposite direction you drag them right see that if you click on column which is the default you'll get the default direction if you try to drag another widget let's say a button now you can only stack it up vertically again if you change the direction of the container you can see the elements are in another direction. Now, if I try to drag a button widget into this container, it has a reversed row. So I'll just click and drag. You can see I can only put this button onto the left or right of each of the widgets, just like that. Now to understand all the controls within the container, I'll simply click on this plus button again. Just create a container. I'll basically drag an icon widget and duplicate it. So, like I said, these are all elements. Let's also drag in another widget, which can be heading widget. We have these kinds of widgets, right? Now I'll click on this container, click on items, and we'll understand each of these. Direction, as the name suggests, is basically the flow of elements within your container, right? It can be row, column, reverse row, reverse column, right? So horizontal or vertical, and also you can change the order by picking the reversed option that's direction of course you can adjust these per device making it highly responsive the next option is align elements now there are a couple of options flex start center flex end and stretch well that's great now if i pick flex start you can see all the elements are moved onto the left side now you have to understand that we picked our column as the direction and the elements are moved to the left hand side. So it's basically axis that is different than the flow. So all the elements are stacked vertically and they're moved horizontally, right? So align items moves or adjusts the items within your container in the opposite direction of the flow or in an axis 90 degrees to the flow. So the flow is top to bottom, but when we pick align items, they're adjusted on horizontal axis, right? They're basically all of the items are moved onto the right, onto the left. So they all are moving in a horizontal direction, 
right now then there's justify content why do we even need this to understand justify content i'll click on the container give it a minimum height so that we can see it better let's give our container a bit height now i'll click on items again now you have different options flex start let's pick center so all the L items are aligned onto the center and you have to understand that justify content aligns items in the same direction as flow since the flow was vertical all the items were adjusted in the same direction whereas align items adjust elements in the direction opposite to the flow right now justify content again you can pick flex end and all the elements are pushed onto the bottom of the container in the vertical direction of course you can have space between you can have space around and as the name suggests you can see the space around the elements so you can adjust the space automatically you don't have to pick margin padding or anything you can simply pick these options and just like that you have the designs that you really need right it's really awesome and really easy creating any kinds of designs using flex container just with click of a button you can space the elements again direction specifies the flow of the items now let's say i change the direction to row now align items icon is also changed now i told you that align item moves the items in the opposite direction since we chose row opposite direction of that is the vertical axis so now align item moves items in the vertical axis instead of horizontal when we picked column right but justify content you can see it moves elements in the same direction as the flow which is in this case horizontal so you pick the flow just specify align items and justify content based on the way in which you want these items to be aligned or to be spaced so something like that it's that easy and of course you can change these options per device making them highly responsive now if you want this to wrap let's say if the width is too less you can wrap it to the next line so basically these are all different ways to position your elements in different ways right and again let's say i have a flow and i want to break an element's flow let's say i want all of this at the center but i want this heading widget to be at the beginning i can click on this heading widget click on advanced and now you have something called align self so you can choose flex start and that will put or break the elements regular flow and override it with whatever you pick you can put it at flex end you can stretch it and you can do whatever you need and notice when you pick any options the border of the element is shrinked to just fit the content whereas when you click on stretch the border or the blue outline is available within the whole heading widget so again that is a neat little optimization you can also change the order again order is the way in which elements are stacked in the direction you can put this heading widget wherever you want and you can also put it at a custom maybe you can say four you can say three you can also pick a size for it you can shrink it and there are other options as well so this is how you can control and design various elements using the flexbox container now also within this container you can add another container i'll just click and drag and that gets added according to the flow of the container so this is a row based container and there is another container within this and not just that within this container you can add another container and the list can go on and on so this is an unlimited nesting of containers and it gives you highly flexible designs now i'll go over the wrap and also order size flex grow flex shrink in another tutorial and i'll explore some practical ways and how to use flexbox container to its full potential but this is a brief overview of elementor flexbox container starting with elementor 3.6 this is available for, for all users. It's basically going to be the structure of your Elementor websites moving forward. That's it for now. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And make sure you stay tuned for the next tutorial coming soon. 
advanced tutorial on Elementor Flexbox. Like this video, share and subscribe if you enjoyed this. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.